I would like to start off this video with a short disclaimer. This is a channel that promotes animal rights, veganism and compassion towards all animals. I do not like to focus on politics, drama or any other issues. There are currently many political issues surrounding Dr. Zakir Nayak in India as well as in other countries. This video has nothing to do with any of that and any incidents that happen in real are purely coincidental to this video. Dr. Zakir Nayak is famous worldwide as a religious televangelist and a preacher. However, in this video, I am neither going to speak about his religion or his beliefs. I have nothing personal against any of my fellow human beings belonging to other religions or other ethnic groups and I am not trying to spread any kind of hatred in this video. I am an animal rights activist who stands up for all animals in all scenarios. Anyone who has supported exploiting animals in the past has been called out by me and I wish to do the same in this video as well. Dr. Zakir Nayak claims that it is ethical to consume animal products that is meat, milk and eggs. He states that his reasons for doing so, which are as follows, are all scientifically backed up and logical. However, my views on this subject are completely the opposite and I also believe that my statements are scientifically backed up and can be proved by logic. So someone has to be right while the other has to be wrong. So let's find out in today's video if Dr. Zakir Nayak's reasonings for consuming meat, milk and eggs are truly rational, logical and scientific or not. If we analyze non-veg food, it's rich in protein. The human body, it requires 23 amino acids, out of which 8 are not made in the human body. It should be given by external diet, which are known as essential amino acids. Now these all 8 essential amino acids are present in no kind of vegetable food together. It's only present in flesh food. So. The non-veg flesh food is more nutritious as compared to vegetables. Sorry to correct you sir, but there are actually 9 essential amino acids and not just 8. Namely, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan and valine. These are the essential 9 amino acids and I will first admit as you said that all of these amino acids can be found in animal products. However, when you make the statement that no single plant food contains all of the essential amino acids, you are not giving the people the entire story. Yes, no single plant food such as an apple, a carrot or just rice contains all of the essential amino acid. But since when did someone sit and eat only rice or eat only apples? People eat rice and dal and vegetables. Basically, we eat a whole variety of plant foods. Therefore, the amino acid that is probably lacking in one plant food is compensated by eating another plant food along with the meal. We eat a balanced diet that incorporates grains, legumes, vegetables, fruits, nuts and seeds, thereby getting all of the essential amino acids that our body needs. In fact, I will go as far as saying this, a diet containing only brown rice and broccoli is sufficient in providing the human body all of the protein it needs along with all of the essential amino acids. Therefore, this statement of yours, sir, is not scientific and cannot be used as an excuse to justify eating meat. Furthermore, if you analyze, if you see the set of teeth of the herbivorous animals, the cow, the goat, the sheep, they have got flat set of teeth. They only have vegetables, they don't have flesh food. If we analyze the set of teeth of the carnivorous animals, the tiger, the leopard, the lion, they have got pointed set of teeth, they have canine set of teeth, they only have flesh, they don't touch vegetables. If you analyze the set of teeth of the human beings, if you go in the mirror and see, we human beings, we have got flat teeth as well as pointed teeth. If we analyze the dice system of the human being, if you compare it to the herbivorous animals, cow, goat, sheep, they can only digest vegetables. The digestive system of the carnivorous animals, tiger, leopard, lion, they can only digest flesh food, they cannot digest vegetables. The digestive system of the human beings can digest both. It has small intestine, big intestine. It can digest vegetables as well as flesh food. It can digest both. Well sir, if you honestly believe that those two similarities you pointed out between us and omnivorous animals justifies us eating meat, milk and eggs, then wait till you see the number of similarities that exist between us and herbivorous animals. Number one, almost all animals that hunt and kill their prey have pointy and sharp claws. Humans do not have these. Point number two, when our surroundings become really hot, herbivorous animals will begin to sweat through their sweat glands, therefore releasing heat from the body, whereas most omnivorous and carnivorous mammals will stick their tongue out and pant to cool their body down. Point number three, the biting potential of our jaw is actually extremely less when compared to other omnivorous and carnivorous animals. We do not possess the power to bite and kill an animal. 
Therefore, humans need to use tools which are obviously not natural. A side note, sir, long canine teeth does not exactly mean omnivorous or carnivorous. For example, gorillas have gigantic canine teeth but are pure plant eaters. Our canine teeth are not designed to actually bite and kill and tear through raw flesh of an animal, but rather designed to bite through hard fruit like apples or pears. Point number four, unlike other omnivores and carnivores, the acids in our stomach are not strong enough to digest raw flesh. Point number five, humans like other herbivores actually have to suck and slurp water when they drink, whereas most carnivores and omnivores tend to lap up water with their tongue. Point number six, a human like other herbivores can move their jaw up and down and side to side and can therefore chew and grind the food they eat. Omnivores and carnivores on the other hand cannot move their jaw from side to side. They can only move them up and down. They can only rip and swallow flesh. They cannot grind their food. Point number seven, unlike what you stated sir, our digestive tract is actually around eight times the length of our torso, which is like other herbivorous animals, whereas for omnivorous and carnivorous animals, their digestive tract is only around three times the length of their body. Point number eight, imagine right now if you were walking across a road along with a cat and both of you stumble across a dead mouse and a tree containing ripe mangoes. Now, instinctively, that cat would consider the dead mouse as food. If you were also a true meat eater, you would also salivate and consider that dead mouse as food, but you do not. Instead, you show interest towards eating the ripe mangoes. Ask yourself why. Point number nine, if you were to put a baby in a crib and in the crib you were to place a live rabbit and an apple, ask yourself what the baby would do. Would the baby kill and eat the rabbit and play with the apple or would the baby eat the apple and play with the rabbit? Now, if the baby did happen to kill the rabbit, would you consider that as normal human infant behavior or would you consider it as strange and violent behavior? Now, if you were to replace the human baby in that scenario with a baby tiger and that baby tiger happened to eat the rabbit and play with the apple, would you consider that as normal or abnormal behavior? Ask yourself why. But now comes the question, are we humans truly omnivores or not? Of course we are omnivores, I am not denying that. But the way you make it seem, sir, is like we are omnivores akin to bears, meaning that we need to eat meat for survival. Humans adopted eating meat as a strategy for survival, but we did not make any biological adaptations to it. Now, if you truly claim to be a scientific person, you must admit the fact that humans are closest related to great apes, that is chimpanzees, bonobos, gorillas, and orangutans. Now, when we look at the physiology and biology of these animals, we can clearly understand that 99% of their calories come from plant produce, that is leaves, shoots, fruits, etc. These great apes do not consume chicken, fish, beef, lamb, eggs, or milk. But now people may want to point out to me saying that, hey, but great apes sometimes do eat insects and rarely they might even eat smaller monkeys or squirrels. Yes, those points do hold true, which is why I did admit we are omnivores. However, we do not need to eat those animals or any animals for survival or for health. If these great apes do not consume meat, milk and eggs and they are our closest relatives, what makes you feel that we are biologically suited to consume these products? The American Dietetics Association has clearly stated that a well-planned vegan diet is suitable for all human beings of all ages, from infancy to adulthood. Please understand that we no longer live in the wild and we live in a society where we have a choice. Every time we go to a restaurant or to a supermarket, we have the choice to choose between plant foods and animal foods. And every time we choose the animal foods, we are choosing an item that is not necessary for survival and which also causes great amount of harm to other living beings. When we have a choice, why choose the violent one? Brother, do you know that even plants have got life? Furthermore, there are some people who say, okay, okay, brother Zakir, I agree that plants have got life, but the plants can't feel pain. Therefore, killing a plant is a lesser sin as compared to killing animal. The point to be noted is that today science has advanced and we have come to know even the plants can feel pain. But the cry of the plant cannot be heard by the human being because human beings hear the frequency that they hear is from 20 cycles per second to 20,000 cycles per second. Anything below and above this range you cannot hear. So there's a farmer in America who converted the cry of the plant into the human frequency and you could come to know when the plants were crying, when they wanted water. By definition, a vegan is a person who does not use or exploit any sentient being for his benefit. Sentient beings are those organisms that possess a brain, a nervous system and can feel pain and suffering. Animals are sentient whereas plants are insentient. 
Scientifically speaking, plants are not even classified into the same kingdom as animals because although both are alive, they are completely different life forms. You are making the statement that plants feel pain and in fact when we cut plants that plants can scream. You say however that we humans cannot hear the scream as the frequency is not suited to our ear. Could you please share with us as to which organ present inside the plant produces these noises? You see sounds are produced by vibrations. My vocal cords vibrate in order for me to produce sounds. Some insects vibrate their wings and they produce sound. Similar to that, could you please show us as to which organ present inside or outside the plant vibrates in order for them to produce the screaming noises that you so claim. You always state that science has proven that plants feel pain. The studies have been done that prove that plants feel pain. But you never go into the details, do you? Another thing, you are a person who is able to quote thousands of texts and literature from the Quran, Vedas, Bible and Gita without even looking at the books. You are able to actually quote paragraphs and page numbers. With that being the case, can't a person such as yourself just state as to which scientific paper has been published that proves that plants feel pain? Can you not please tell us which reference, which university, which study was conducted by which scientist that has been peer reviewed and published in the scientific journal that proves that plants feel pain? In fact, I will go as far as giving you a challenge, sir. If you or any of your followers or anyone in this world can show me one proper peer-reviewed scientific data proving that plants feel pain, I will accept defeat and I will eat meat. But you will not be able to prove me wrong for the following two reasons. Number one, YouTube videos and news articles with clickbait titles are not considered as scientific journals. Only a journal that is written by an expert in the field and has then been verified by a panel of judges and has been approved can be considered as valid proof. And point number two, it makes zero sense from an evolutionary perspective for plants to feel pain at all. Pain is the process through which the brain forces the organism to recognize danger in its surrounding and therefore do actions that are necessary to keep itself alive and healthy. For example, if my house was on fire, I would run out and save myself because I would fear the pain of getting burned by the flames. If a tiger were roaring and running towards me, I would run away, fearing the pain it could inflict upon me by biting and slashing me. If I were to stumble across a drunken man in the streets armed with a knife, trying to start a fight with me, I could either stand my ground and fight him or I could run away. In all dangerous scenarios that animals find themselves in, they always have two options, fight or flight. Animals always make complex and cognitive thoughts to ensure they're making the right decision. Should I stand and receive pain and fight on or should I just try to save myself from all the pain and run away? Animals always make complex and cognitive thoughts when they are put in such scenarios. They ask themselves, should I stand here and try to fight and withstand the pain and defeat my enemy or should I try to avoid the pain altogether and escape? However, plants are completely stationary. Be it when you chop a plant, when you burn a plant or when you eat a plant, it is rooted to the ground. It cannot move. They do not have any option. So ask yourself, why would an organism that cannot move, that cannot engage in locomotion, ever develop the ability to feel pain? What would be the use for it? Anyone who has learned about evolution will immediately recognize the fact that it makes no sense for an organism that cannot engage in a flight or fight response to feel pain and suffering, as pain is merely a motivating factor for animals to make sure that they're alive and continue to stay away from danger. Also on a side note, the animals that we eat are fed plants in order to fatten them up before they are murdered by us. It takes several kilograms of plant food to produce just one kilogram of animal food. Therefore, meat eaters kill far more plants than vegans ever will. This one point alone is enough to disprove everything you said, even if it is proven tomorrow that plants do feel pain, which it won't. We vegans still kill far less number of plants than meat eaters. There was another person who came and argued with me and told me, Brother Zakir, I agree with you that plants have got life, plants can feel pain, but the plants have got about two senses less as compared to the animals. Therefore, killing a plant is a lesser sin as compared to killing an animal. I'm asking you the question, brother. Suppose your brother, your elder brother, he is born deaf and dumb. After he grows up, and someone comes and kills him. So will you go and tell the judge, me lord, give the murderer less punishment because my brother had two senses less. He could not hear, he could not speak. Will you say that? In fact, you will say, give the murderer double punishment. He could not hear, he could not speak. My brother was masoom, he was innocent. 
Dear sir, your logic is completely flawed here. A plant cannot be compared to a blind or deaf human being. To be blind, you need to have eyes that do not function. To be deaf, you need to have ears that do not function. If an organism does not even possess those organs, how can they be compared to those who do? This mug is not deaf or blind. It's just a mug. Similarly, this tomato is also not deaf or blind. Now, these objects cannot be compared to me because they do not possess the malfunctioning organs to even be considered as handicapped creatures. Think of it this way. If I told you a plant was suffering from kidney stones, you wouldn't believe me. You would say, kidney stones? Can you please show me the kidneys? If I told you a plant was suffering from a heart attack, you would say, heart attack? Can you please show me where the heart of the plant is? Similarly, calling a plant blind or deaf or comparing them with humans who are blind and deaf makes absolutely zero sense. It is an illogical and unscientific comparison. And one last thing, from your own words, sir, you just compared a plant to a child who is handicapped. Do you really feel killing a child who is handicapped and killing a tomato is the same? I also hope that people watching this video realize that killing a plant and killing these innocent children is also not the same. I want to thank everyone who has watched this video till the end. If you are truly interested to learn more about veganism and how you can get all your nutrients on a vegan diet, please check out the following videos where I have explained them in detail. If you wish to talk to more vegans from India, please consider joining the Facebook group India Vegan Revolution and post your queries there. Once again, thank you for watching. Please live vegan. I'll see you guys next time.